Hello friends, today we will discuss how to determine basic runway length for an airport. In order to have uniformity in the design of airports in different countries, ICAO has classified airports based on air aerodrome reference code and this code is a two letter classification 1 to 4 and A to E. 1 to 4 is based on basic runway length which is required at the airport. Code 1 means when you require basic runway length less than 800 meter and code 4 is when you have the basic runway length more than 1800 meter. A to E is based on the wing span of the aircraft. So that is how the airports are classified. 4E. Now here 4 indicates the basic runway length, E indicates the wing span of the aircraft that can be permitted to use the runway. Now what is this basic runway length? Basic runway length is defined under certain assumed conditions at the airport and these conditions are like this. Number 1, airport altitude is at sea level. Number 2, temperature at the airport is standard that is 15 degree centigrade. Number 3, the runway is leveled in the long tunnel direction that means there is no gradient in the runway. Fourth is no wind is blowing at the airport that is you have completely calm condition. Five, aircraft is loaded to its full capacity. Six, no wind is blowing on the way to the destination. And seventh is that atmosp atmospheric temperature during travel is standard. Now if you look at these seven conditions at the airport, the last two conditions basically do not have any direct bearing on the runway length. And what are the, those last two conditions? That no wind is blowing on the way to the destination at, and atmospheric temperature during travel is standard. So if these conditions are not met, they will have some influence on the fuel consumption and the fuel consumption will have some effect on the weight of the aircraft at the time of landing but not directly basic runway length. Next two conditions that no wind is blowing on the runway and aircraft is loaded to full capacity, they are conservative conditions that the lift provided to the aircraft will be minimum when there is no wind at the runway. And similarly, the length of the runway required will be maximum for takeoff when the aircraft is loaded to full capacity. But first three conditions that the runway is at mean sea level, temperature is standard and runway is leveled. These are three conditions which are never met and therefore basic runway length is always corrected for these three conditions. But let us today discuss what is basic runway length, how do we estimate this basic runway length. To estimate basic runway length for an airport or for aircraft, three cases are considered. Normal landing case, normal takeoff case that is all engine takeoff and engine failure case. Engine failure case. And the case which gives you the highest or the maximum value of length of the runway required is considered. These depend upon the performance characteristics of the aircraft. Now normal landing case requires that the aircraft, now this is the total length which we call the landing distance. What basically it requires that the aircraft should come to stop within 60% of this length, 60% of landing distance. The aircraft must be able to stop within 60% of landing distance. 
लैंडिंग डिस्टेंस इज स्पेसिफाइड फॉर ईच क्लास ऑफ एयरक्राफ्ट बाई इट्स मैनुफेक्चर एंड वेन यू से दैट इट शुड बी एबल टू स्टॉप विद इन सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ लैंडिंग डिस्टेंस दैन वी एश्यूम दैट इट क्रॉसिस द रनवे थ्रेश होल्ड एट ए हाइट ऑफ फिफ्टी फीट दैट इज ए नॉर्मल लैंडिंग केस वेन देर इज नो स्नैक इन दी एनी ऑफ द इंजन ऑफ द एयरक्राफ्ट so this full length full length must be full strength payment full strength payment that is the normal landing case normal take off requires all engine take off in a normal condition and here there are few terms which are generally used in case of take off of an aircraft this is the runway aircraft will start to take off run from this end and let us say it leaves the ground at this point now this is what is called the lift off distance l o d lift off distance the point from where the aircraft leaves the runway from the edge of the runway just to take care of some variability among the pilots this distance is 115% of lod let us say this distance 115% of lot now the aircraft is considered to have taken off successfully when it reaches the elevation of 35 feet 10.7 meter 35 feet this is distance to 35 d35 d35 distance to d35 is generally fixed for an aircraft and again considering the variability among the pilots the total take off distance which we call the tod take off distance is 115% of this d35 so that is your d35 tod let us say up to here and this is 115% of d35 you can say d35 you can say d10.7 or sometimes 10.5 meter Thirty-five is in feet. Now, because the aircraft has left the ground at this point, so this total area need not be full strength payment, and part of it can be clear way. Clear way basically means it is graded area. It's a it is graded area, but not as a full strength payment to support the load of the aircraft. And what ECAO says. that clear way should not be clear way should not be more than half of 115% of lod and 115% of d35 means should not be more than tod minus 115% of lod lift off distance TOD is 115% of D35. Okay, clear way is basically uh, if you look in the plan, it is like this. That this is the runway, and here is the clear way. Clear way is not a full strength payment, but it is a level. It is under the control of airport authority. Minimum width of the clear way. as specified is 150 meter it is in the alignment of the runway but normal graded area third case is engine failure now in case of engine failure there can be two cases engine failure case may require clear way or stop way clear way or stop way 
Now, there is a difference between the clear way and the stop way. I told you clear way is the graded area. It is not full strength pavement. Stop way is the extension of the runway. It is the extension of the runway and this is the end of the runway, what you call the threshold marking for runway. Now, this is the stop way, which is provided to support the weight of the aircraft. This provided to support. Now, this can be used either to accelerate the aircraft to take off, about it take off. So, if the aircraft is not, it is not possible for the pilot to stop the aircraft within remaining length of the runway. So, this distance is used to accelerate, take off, come in the line of the runway and then land. If this the speed is not high, then this length can be used to decelerate the, run, the, the aircraft and stop. Now, there is no clear guidelines what should be the length of this stopway. But width of the stopway is same as width of the runway. That is the difference. The stopway has the same width as the runway. Clear way has the minimum width of 150 meter. And this can be more than clear way. It can be less than clear way. So, these three cases are considered to determine to determine the basic runway length. Now, the required field length, required field length is generally made up of three components. Full strength pavement, field length, field length basically means total length of the runway including stopway and clear way. It has full strength payment, which is let us say FS, full strength payment or full strength length, partial strength, partial strength length, that is your stop way. Because I told you stop way is required to, such to support the weight of the aircraft, but need not be full strength payment as a remaining length of the runway. And third is clear way. Clear way. CL. Let us take case one. Case one is a normal landing case. And here the field length FL. And let me put one here just to denotes that this is the case 1, feed length is equal to landing distance, landing distance and it is equal to stopping distance divided by 0.6 and this full length should be full strength payment. So, this is FS1 is FL1, that is case 1. Case 2, case 2 is normal takeoff case. Now, in this case, the feed length, feed length for case 2 is full strength payment plus clear way. I am putting 2 here, suffix 2 here just to see that is the case 2. So, feed length is full strength payment plus clear way. Now, full strength payment is estimated like this that you have takeoff distance for case 2 Takeoff distance is 115 percent of D35 and clear way, clear way is CL2 is half of this takeoff run distance, takeoff run distance TOD minus 1.15 into lift of distance. You remember that figure. Take off distance is 115 percent of D35 and this is 115 percent of lift of distance. Difference between the two, half of it can be clear way. That is and therefore, in the case 2, the full strength payment FS2 will be take off distance minus 
क्लियर वे टू इन केस थ्री इंजन फेलियर टेक ऑफ केस थ्री ए इंजन फेलियर टेक ऑफ मीन्स यू नीट स्टॉप वे और क्लियर वे नाउ दिस केस इज वेरी सिमिलर टू दिस केस केस टू नाउ हेयर फील्ड लेंथ इज फुल स्ट्रेंथ पेमेंट प्लस क्लियर वे नाउ दिस क्लियर वे इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दिस दैट क्लियर वे ओके एंड टी ओ डी हेयर इज डी थर्टी फाइव डी थर्टी फाइव फोर केस थ्री this d35 is different from this d35 this is a normal case it's a engine failure case it is higher higher than this d35 and therefore the clear way for case 3 will be half of t of d3 minus lift of distance for case 3 again i would say that we don't multiply this by 1.15 or this by 1.15 because these when they are specified by the manufacturer already 115% is taken care of so simply subtract these two take off distance minus lod for case 3 take half of that that is clear way and the full strength payment for this will be tod minus clear way case 4 will be when engine failure about to take off means you need to stop the aircraft that is 3b aborted take off take off is not successful because length is not available and here the full the, the feed length is full strength payment plus stop way and this full strength payment plus stop way for this case that is called das distance to accelerate or stop required field length required field length out of all these four cases will be fl will be maximum of t the landing distance the first one t o d in case of 2 take off distance in case of 3 and d a s this is the highest of these four values is your field length final full strength payment will be maximum of f s 1 FS two and FS three. Case one, case two, case three. Clear way. Clear way will be minimum of full sorry field length minus DAS or CL two or CL three. Minimum of these three will be. the final length of clear way and stop way stop way will be das minus fs fs is maximum of these three values that is how you finally arrive at three full strength payment length clear way and stop way clear length can be minimum zero and it should not be generally more than 300 meter so cl is zero or maximum 300 meter and i told you stop way there is no guidelines for stop way it can be more than clear way also less than clear way also let me take one small example just to illustrate how do we get these three parameters determine the runway length requirement for an aircraft with following performance characteristics and 
characteristics are like this in a normal landing case the stopping distance is 1500 meter normal takeoff case lift off distance is given as 2100 meter and distance to 11 meter height is 2400 meter third engine failure case engine failure takeoff case where LOD is 2460 meter and D11 is 2730 meter and DAS that is acceleration stopping distance is 2850 and the last one engine failure aborted takeoff require only DAS that is 2850. Now let us see case 1. Case 1 is that the landing distance should be equal to stopping distance upon point 6. Stopping distance is 1500 divided by point 6, it is 2500 meter. And this should be the complete full strength payment, and therefore FL1 is FS1, that is 2500 meter. Case 2 normal takeoff case TOD for this case is 115 percent of D35. D35 is given as 2400. So it is 2760 meter. And clear way for this can be half of TOD minus 115% of D35. Sorry, lift of distance. And lift of distance is given 2100. And this is 172.5 meter. And therefore, FS or full strength payment will be 2760 that is your TOD minus clear way 172.5 meter and that is 2587.5 meter. That is case 2. Case 3. Case 3 is TOD here. TOD here is D35. We do not multiply it by 1.15 and that is given 2730 meter. And that is what I told you. This distance is larger than this distance in normal case. And therefore, the clear way for case 3 will be half of this TOD 2730 minus lift of distance for this case that is 2460 and this is 135 meter. This is clear way for case 3. Case 4, case 4 is about it take off and there you need only DAS and DAS is given as 2850 meter. Now the actual runway components will be like this that field length is maximum of T over D2 that is 2760 landing distance for case 1 2500 T over D3 that is 2730 and DAS is 2850. Maximum of this. So, field length, total field length required is 2850 meter. Full strength length that is maximum of FS1, FS2, FS3. For case 1, it is 2500, highest of 2500. For case 2, it is 2587.5, 2587 2587.5 and for case 3, it is this minus this, 2730 minus 135 that is 2595.
so it is 2595 meter stop way will be das minus full strength payment now das is 2850 full strength payment is 2595 meter and therefore this is 255 meter that is stop way and clear way clear way is minimum of field length minus das or clear way 2 clear way 3 now field length here is 2850 which is the same as das and therefore this become zero and therefore there is no clear way so this is zero that is how we determine different elements of the runway so friends thank you very much for watching this video if you have any doubt you can write in the comment box